Hello guys, uh, this is me, Andres, again. I'm uh, here to take you to another virtual tour that I hope you enjoy. Uh, this time is uh, one of the most impressive ones we have in our menu. Um, it is the Southern Ecuador tour. This, I place the name of this one, Endemics, Rare and Megas. Uh, because you can see a lot of endemic birds, uh, eight out of the nine endemic, uh, hold on, um, seven out of the nine endemic birds that we have in mainland Ecuador, uh, for instance, plus a ton of rare birds like the crescent-faced anpita, uh, orange-throated tanager, and some megas, South American megas like the long wattle umbrella bird you can see here, and the uh, hokotoko anpita. Uh, this tour is a long tour with the extension is close to 20 days, it's like 19 days, but you can get close to 700 species in uh, this uh, particular tour. Um, and yeah, just like that, uh, Jose in the very last one that he did, he got almost 700 species in the tour. Apart from all the rare, all the megas, all the endemics, this is a very, very special tour. Um, and it was Jose who did it, who is one of the blindest and laziest of our guides. No, sorry, it's exactly the opposite. It's one of the best guys we have. Um, but the thing is that in this particular tour, we will cover a lot of ground in Southern Ecuador right here. Okay, and I'll be using this map and this other one to uh, show you where we will be moving around. Just to show you around, you start in Guayaquil here, and we do this loop through the days, you see? And with the extension, we do just a couple of more days here. But notice how the track goes through yellow, green, um, chestnut to here, and darker green here. It doesn't show, but here it should be actually brown, brown, dark brown because of the high elevation. We go in through a lot of different ecosystems. That's why we get such a vast, vast list. Okay, so um, let's start. We start with the coast. Okay. And uh, with the coast, we do in the first day after arriving in Guayaquil, the uh, second biggest city of the country, we do in one go all the way to here through tumbation areas and through some wet, close to wet areas here. And we uh, touch some nice wetlands where we will be targeting this puppy here. We'll start our tour with one of the megas of South America, really. There is only three species of um, screamers, and this is the the horned screamer, a very cool one to watch. So we start off the tour with this one here, and then we pick up a few things that we can get in wetlands that uh, build up the list, like snail kites or cocoi herons. Uh, a bunch of um, terns can be fine around, like royal, these uh, um, gold bill tern, uh, several, several others. Eventually you can pick up South American tern. Um, things related to water, Mask water tyrants um, and rails. Of course, Rufus Neck wood rail is a possibility because we will be going close to some uh, uh, mangroves. And uh, eventually, on the go, we can pick up savanna hawk, roadside hawks, uh, plumbus kites, a few raptors around there. I have not really seen it during this particular tour, but in Ecuador, when you you can eventually get also this flamingo, this uh, Chilean flamingo. And then we move towards the Chocó region. This is all in the very first day. So notice that how big the first day's list is. Because we move from here and we climb up a little ways into this green area here that you can see. And this is the Buenaventura Reserve that is a foothill area. Just a very nice isolated patch of Chocó here, the southernmost patch of Chocó here. And uh, we go for a few of the megas of Ecuador and South America here. This uh, particular lodge is very nice, is run by the Hokotoko Foundation and I'll be saying this word Hokotoko quite a lot because this foundation works in the southern part of Ecuador quite quite well at protecting land and giving people a nice place to stay uh, inside the forest as you can see here like your balconies have birds right in front of you um, from the hammock you can see that and the restaurant itself also is surrounded by um, by forest right there 
while you have a nice bottle of wine. Um, these pictures are taken from the Hokotok Foundation website um, so that I can show you clearly how it is. Um, they feed a lot of things there, among those coatis that <laughs> turn very, um, uh, eh, what can I say, curious to say the least, and they come really close to you. But in terms of birds, this reserve is very important to get as the first of the Ecuadorian endemics, el oro parakeet. And they do, this Fundación Jocotoco does a great job on protecting, not only protecting this, uh, the, the land for these parakeets, but also what they do is they have a system of nesting boxes where they get them to nest and they have brought the population up uh, from uh, very close to one. Um, extinction in this particular species. Now that one and a tiny tapaculo that is called Ecuadorian tapaculo, which is also endemic to the country, but it's still a tapaculo, are the main main things of that tour, of that particular reserve. But what people really want to see the most is this one. This picture is taken by Jose. Um, I wish I would uh, take in this picture. This is a long wattle umbrella bird. It's for sure one of the birds of the trip. Um, it is typically among the top five on the list of the um, final list of the of the trip. Um, this is my picture, not as good, and the bird is not as excited, <laughs> not displaying as much. And this is a choco endemic bird, only in wet forest like that. Um, and then. Uh, we can start seeing a bunch of things that are proper wet forest, like broad-billed mud moths and uh, these other choco endemic, the club wing mannequin. Now, this is my picture. <laughs> I gotta say it. Um, yeah, mine as well. So, um, this club wing mannequin is, again, one of the uh, cool birds that people want to see the most uh, in these areas, and this is the only place that we have a chance to see it. And it brings up the wings like that, and you normally don't see it. it it lasts less than a second and it does a heartbeat that touches the tips of the wings and produces a buzzing sound like Bzzz. It's a very cool one and uh, people love mannequins so this is a very very cool one um, Also among the specials that we can get in this reserve is this gray backed hawk uh, tomb is endemic and uh, Ocracious Attilas are amongst the targets that we will be trying to do that while we get a bunch of other things uh, on the process like rufous headed chachalacas that come to the feeders and eventually a royal flycatcher is around and uh, choco toucans are cool sometimes they come to feeders there uh, sometimes they come hangover as you can see in this guy <laughs> uh, we also have pale mandible or colored arasari that comes to the to the feeders of the reserve and as this is a nice and tropical forest we can get these trogons like a gartered trogon and we have a huge amount of hummingbirds that uh, occur here in the uh, in the reserve. Uh, there are feeders where you can see things like this uh, velvet purple coronet or uh, violet tailed sylphs. These are both males. Uh, Jacobins, a widely distributed bird, but very nice. And uh, we can also get eventually this bird here that if you split it is another of the endemics of Ecuador called the Ecuadorian plumleteer if you split it, but uh, so far it's called the white vented plumleteer. Okay. All right, so now we will be crossing to the Tumbes region. And this is a very dry region here. That's why I painted in a yellow. So this particular um, map here is one that I worked for the Ministry of Tourism so that we can show the Ecuadorian birding map. Um, and uh, I was showing you that we'll be crossing now through this yellow area that is the Tumbes region, a very dry area that holds an interesting ecosystem called tropical dry forest not tropical humid but tropical dry forest and some scrub and this particular area is shared between the southern part of ecuador and the west southern part of ecuador and uh, um, peru and this holds a bunch of things that are endemics to um to uh, the region uh, the tumbes region okay among those uh, we can see even this tree here that is endemic to this region is the kapok, the Tumbes kapok tree. It uh, drops the leaves yearly and it is still is green in the trunk, so it still does photosynthesis through the trunks and the branches, but uh, it doesn't um, uh, have the leaves so that it doesn't evaporate and, and dies um, 
dry, let's say, and there's a other a few other species there like muyuyos and that, but this is more or less how it looks. But also it can be some um, denser, like you can see here. This is a very, very, very nice group from Alaska that I guided a few years back. And you can see here the same trunk and some more dense scrub in there, but it's still kind of thorny, uh, dry scrub. And this is again the balconies of the restaurant of um, the Hokotoko Foundation's lodge that is called the Urraka Lodge there. Again, the Hokotoko Foundation is doing a great job and we always go visit their lodges because they are very, very comfortable, very nice. Um, they give you breakfast really, really early as, as you need and they help you with information about the birds and they set their uh, lodges right in the middle of the forest. You can see here the restaurant, a couple of the cabins here, and this is all pristine, protected forest by this foundation. And this has turned into the main target uh, for most people that visit the area now. It's not a tumbes endemic, it occurs in several places in South America, but it is really, really hard, but it is a superb bird. This photo is by Sam Woods. We went together to uh, see this bird a year ago, almost. This is the buff-fronted owl that was seen in the uh, Jorupe, and reserve and now it has turned into a big big target in there um, but among the other targets that we can see are tumbes endemics like elegant crescent chest this big one is high on the list of all the people that visit here this is Nick Athanas that took this picture and this bad picture is mine uh, <laughs> these are pale browed tinamus that are fed in front of the restaurant so imagine seeing a tinamu in a tropical area is very very hard well Happily, we got these guys that help us with this. Um, these ampitas, Watkins' ampita, it tends to be in the um, grounds of the hotel, uh, so we can take pictures of this, especially in the dry, dry season. It tends to be very confiding, uh, or it tends to be very, very <laughs> reclusive, as in my picture here. The previous was Sam's, lucky one, and uh, mine is this one. This is normally how you try to find this bird, it's just harder. But this bird here is kind of the one that gives the lodge its name, the Urraca Lodge, or white-tailed jay. It's a cool, cool, cool bird, um, very easy to see in these, in these areas. And uh, the good thing is that in many, many of the places that we're going, including this one, there's feeders so that you can take pictures like this, uh, or better. <laughs> this is just one of my pictures. Um, the only hummingbird or the only couple hummingbirds that actually occur in the area or that actually come to feeders in the area um, are this one, the Amazilia hummingbird and a long-billed star throat. But uh, this is the one that it is quite, uh, it, well, is endemic to, to the tumbe, so yeah. A couple of other endemic tumbesian birds are black cap sparrow that we can see on the grounds of the hotel. Uh, quite cool bird, really. And um, we try to find chestnut colored swallows that uh, we go to specific places where they nest and we can see them around the nest. And as you can see, they pick from their nest holes <laughs> while we're taking the pictures. Very cool birds. Um, colored uh, anthrakes are amongst the tumbes endemics that we can find around the area. The same with Ecuadorian piculates. Um, lucky shot, eh? Cool. And this is a fasciated um, wren, uh, another of the noisy birds, has a very intriguing sound like <laughs> it's very cool to see. Um, Guayaquil woodpecker, and this is uh, one of the big Campephilus woodpeckers that we can see in this tour, very cool bird to see, uh, also endemic to the tumbes. And a long-tailed mocker, also endemic to the tumbes. Mm. Within the grounds of the hotel, they put these feeders and you can see the red mask parakeets away from uh, the Bay Area in San Francisco. <laughs> these are actually the areas where you where you see them uh, native, these red mask parakeets and not in the US. <laughs> Peruvian pygmy owl, also some people call it Pacific pygmy owl, is a typical voice of the area and is a typical help to the guides. Sometimes there's nothing going on and you whistle the, the voice of this bird and uh, you get some birds that come and try to mob you. So it is a good bird to have. 
and this Peruvian metal lark is a really cool bird. It's in uh, some grassy areas around the, um, the tumbes. By night, not only the buff fronted owl is what we want, but also West Peruvian screech owl is around the lodge, and the same with the spectacle owl. So we have uh, quite a few things to look for in this particular area. Another of the tumbes endemics that is quite rare in, and, uh, and um, threatened is this is Lady Bicard. Uh, typically we see it around here. Tumbes peewees are around. This particular subspecies of tumbes peewee, people uh, try to split it into tumbes peewee, the tropical peewee, into tumbes peewee. And uh, this is actually called tumbes. This is a tumbes hummingbird. It cannot be more boring. <laughs> but it is a special one from here, so it, it works. Tumbes sparrow. Uh, this is a cool bird, really, the tumbes sparrow. And tumbes tyrant, a fairly recent addition to uh, the list of Ecuador. Um, for the Tumbesian region, made by Nick Athanas and Alan and uh, Ruth uh, while they were doing their big year a few years back. Some whooping monmouths that are not particularly Tumbes endemics, but uh, they are seen here more than all other, other places. And we have a chance to go from the lodge and do a couple of days around here and there and try to get this uh, duck, like the comb duck, for instance, and a few more things, streak-headed uh, wood creepers and, and that. Um, and then we move on to another area I'll show you. All right, so um, let's go back to the map here uh, so that we can see the movement that we're going to be doing. After spending three nights in Jorupe, which is right here, right in the border with Peru, we actually cross the, the border with Peru sometimes to just get a beer in Peru. People that like doing that. But from there, three days, we spend it here and we move up down here and to these other areas to explore all these tumbes regions but once we leave we will be going away and going all the way to here to the andes already but we'll spend some time here in the western andes and that's why i wanted to show you here we will be going from here to here and in this particular day we go from close to sea level bird up here in the andes move down the interandean valleys and end up already in the western slope in in the eastern slope sorry here you see um and let's start with that we go to the utuana uh, reserve which is also owned by the hokotoko foundation after this particular bird here the black crested teeth tyrant which is probably the cutest of the tour <laughs> it's a really really cool bird as you can see uh, but the hummingbird feeders here attract this puppy here that it is a rainbow star front lit. Quite a superb bird to see. I mean, look at that chestnut belly and the colors on the forehead. It is one of my favorite hummingbirds out there. Very cool and it's quite big. It's like... Um, Purple-throated uh, sun angel also goes to the feeders uh, together with other things like speckled hummingbird and, and a couple more. Uh, but other things that you can see in here and nowhere else include this black cowled uh, saltator and uh, Jelski's chat tyrant. These two birds are all in this area and for the region we are, uh, for the tour in this particular region we bring a bunch of other things like Lame Bamba and Pita. Um, this guy here also, the um, Hemispingus, Pura Hemispingus, uh, still considered kind of specific with the um, uh, black eared hemispingus, I don't know why. And uh, yeah, we move on to another spot, and by night we can try to find this bird here that is a Copicus screech owl, which was recently, recently discovered in Ecuador, formerly a Peruvian endemic, but uh, just a couple years ago they were seen in the south of Ecuador in, inside actually a city. Um, in a city park, which was very amazing to finish up that day. All right, so moving on to the next place, I was explaining to you that we did already this from the coast to the Amazon, really Just moving up here, going like that, and ended up in this area here at about 8,000 feet in elevation in uh, the uh, humid cloud forest in the subtropics of the eastern slope of the Andes, already in the Amazon side of the Andes, in the reserve of Tapichalaca. And believe it or not, yes, another of the Hokotoko Foundation reserves that protect uh, some really cool uh, things. And for that, this is a, uh, 
the, the area as it looks, um, as you can see in Reserva Tapichalaca, Fundación Jocotoco. And uh, soon the name Jocotoco will make sense. This is my wife here, the first time that we visited a few years back. You can see how it is the cloud forest. Previously, look at this blue sky. Normally it's not like that. Normally it's quite clouded like this. And uh, here we went together to burn a few years back. I'm not that seen anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's better. And uh, these are the, the rooms. It's a very cool um, a location of wooden, um, but very comfortable rooms. And as always, birding right from the balcony of the hotel. This is the inside of the lodge. There you can see there is quite comfortable. The um, accommodation is very, very nice. And the people that work there are very, very cool. And uh, from the lodge, we start walking and we start birding. And the main attraction will be coming soon. We have to go into this trail to get this bird here that this guy is about to feed. This is one of the rangers that helps with the feeding of this baby here, the Hokotoko and Pita. So this is a cell phone picture, okay? Um, this is not. This is not. This is the bird that gives the name to the foundation, Hokotoko. is a super bird. It's a very large and Pita with one of the nicest, nicest appearances, the nicest face of most ant pitas, really. Uh, such a cool bird. Um, it is apparently onomatopoeic. This, uh, the sound is as it, uh, uh, the name is as it sounds. But uh, there is some confusion there with the <laughs> white-throated screech owl, which also sounds very similar there. But the bird has brought a lot of money into conservation thanks to people trying to see it and thanks to people trying to conserve it. This bird is very, very, very important to the country. Okay? As it gets fed, happily, a couple other ant pitas sometimes assist, like the chestnut named ant pita and uh, undulated ant pita. This is Sam Wood's photo of undulated ant pita, it's not mine. Um, but then the lodge itself has some cool feeders in which you can see amethyst throated uh, sun angel um, and um, chestnut breasted coronets colored Incas around, little sun angel, also called flame-throated uh, sun angel. They are all amongst the um, menu in terms of hummingbirds that are right there at the lodge. White-bellied wood star as well, a very cool bird. And uh, the area is great, not only for the Hokotoko and Pita, that is the very main attraction, of course, but it has a ton of rare birds that, uh, well, you don't see them all in one go, really, and it takes forever to find this particular one sometimes. This is a saltator, which is very, very, very um, rare uh, to see in, in, in the area. Um, you can also get Andean Putu. Uh, sometimes the rangers have a stakeout there. And sometimes also white-throated screech owls responds by night. This is a lucky daytime photo by me. Some of the coolest birds that you have to work for uh, to try to see them and find them are Ocelated Tapaculo, Bard Anthrosh, several other Anpitas occur there like Rufus, like uh, uh, Slady Capped, and, uh, and so on. But in terms of passerines that are moving the canopies, and uh, the brushes around you include the black-capped hemispingus. Uh, it's a very cool bird, this one. This is a super cool bird, also quite rare and difficult to see. Sometimes you do see it, sometimes you don't. This is a white-capped tanager. Again, not my photo. This is Daniel's photo. Lucky. <laughs> no, he's a good, good photographer. This is a uh, grass-green tanager that moves around the flocks with the flocks here together with hooded mountain tanagers uh, they are really cool birds saffron crown tanagers are around and a few a few other things um, barred fruit eater represents the cotingas in the area and in terms of tyrants we have black-throated toddy tyrants and uh, rufus crown toddy flycatchers are are around okay so this particular area we stay, it will stay a couple days and then we move on to lower in the foothills. Let me show you. 
Okay, so after spending some nights there in the subtropics, we move down towards the foothills of the Andes. And for that, I'll show you where we'll be going. Um, we'll be moving back. This is the area where we were in Tapichalaca, it's, it's quite Andean. But we move back to the city of Loja and then drop down to Zamora and then farther down in here to Yanquam area. So that I can put you on this map, we were here and we'll be dropping down in elevation towards these areas here in the Amazon, quite low in the foothills in there. Um, again, in this other map, backtracking from Tapichalaca to Loja, Zamora area where Copalinga Lodge is located and down into Yanquam. So this is all a different ecosystem. You can see all green here. This is the Amazon foothills. Okay, and uh, the Amazon foothills are very humid and very nice. They hold a ton, a ton of birds. I don't know what happened with this picture. It used to be bigger, but it is show it is to show you the accommodation in which we will be staying for a couple of nights in Copalinga. Copalinga used to be owned by a very, very, very nice lady from Belgium, but she left a couple of years back and guess who took over? The Hokotoko Foundation, because we needed somebody to really protect the area that had been already protected by Catherine, the owner of the Copalinga Lodge. And they are doing a great job to keeping it up. And uh, the lodge is very, very, very nice. And it holds a ton of birds that come to the feeders, both hummingbirds and fruit feeders for all the different things. The accommodation is superb, is very, very nice. And um, it's so comfortable to explore the Amazon from this location. It's a really cool cool place and this is one of the main targets when we visit Copalinga and the regions of Zamora and this is Sam's Wood, Sam Wood's uh, picture of a coquette, spangled coquette, look at that herdew here and the black spots in there, it's a very very cool bird that one and um, this is my photo, not as good but in flight, the uh, spangled coquette, such a cool bird but there is a ton, a ton of hummingbirds that come by and um, that are proper from the eastern slopes of the Andes. This is a wire crested thorntail. It's such a cool bird, such a beautiful bird. And uh, blue tail emeralds are around, and golden tail sapphires are also typically in the feeders, together with, um, if you're lucky and uh, the bird is around, that little wood star tends to show up uh, at times there. And the orange booted racket tail is, um, is possible as well. A couple of species of uh, brilliants are there, like violet fronted and black throated brilliants are in, in the feeders. And in the vervenas, we always have violet headed hummingbird moving here and there. And uh, those are kind of the regulars, but sometimes we have other things like greenish puff legs, sometimes over around there. But from the lodge, we move to the park of uh, Podocarpus, which is the very main place to find this bird here, is a white-breasted parakeet. Um, very cool bird as well and, and quite range restricted. And this is Jose's, Jose Hiliane's photo. And um, in the park we can get a second species of umbrella bird. Imagine in a tour getting two different umbrella birds. This is Amazonian umbrella bird. You can get it in the Podocarpus Park from Copalinga. This, uh, this jacamar is also a very special one, coppery chested jacamar. Um, this is the main area to try to find it, it's only on foothills. The lodge has started a couple years back a thing on feeding tinamus as well, and you can get, if you're lucky, this one here uh, being fed, and you can take nice pictures. Not that this one is one, but <laughs> this is a great tinamu, but also little tinamu sometimes shows up there. Um, of course, this beast is, is really big, um, is the main attraction. But the, hum the, the fruit feeders at the lodge hold sometimes these uh, uh, green and gold tanagers. Um, this is a female with a streak in here, you see in the head. This is a male over here. Um, also, orange eared tanagers and. Um, and uh, well, this is golden ear tanager, sorry, and this is orange ear tanagers. These are all from the foothills here. This is a weird fresco uh, filter that I did on this particular photo. I don't know what I, why I did that. I didn't realize I was putting that one here, but in any case. Um, Inca jays, part of the green jay complex, are around and they're always moving around the lodge grounds. 
and if you are lucky when we visit the park we can get eventually Andean cock of the rock so one of the iconic birds of the country can be seen in this tour as well one of the iconic birds of South America can also be seen in this tour so I mean this tour is just incredible it has everything some rare birds can include also semi-colored hawk that I found a couple years back in in the area and we move on from Copalinga that is here we move farther in and deeper into these areas that are, uh, until the 2000s the border was not even settled with Peru in the Yanquam area and uh, we move over here because there is a particular tanager that is very rare and, and endangered that uh, is there but for um, for that one we have to put up with a little bit of a down slope side on, <laughs> on accommodation this is Yanquam Lodge which is very comfortable is alright but it is much ba more basic than Copalinga by comparison really but I mean it gives you enough and we um, stay there for two nights because there's a ton of birds that we can get there as well hummingbird feeders don't really work as well here but I've seen a couple of things there like even an uh, Amethyst throated wood star and a couple other things but this bird here is the main main target the orange throated tanager is quite range restricted it is like seen in a very very tiny patch in, in South America and this is the place in Ecuador to see it the only one Orange throated tanager is a beautiful, beautiful tanager, very, very unique. Um, and then other birds that are in lower elevations, like black throated ant birds are around, um, chestnut tailed ant birds are around, hairy crested ant birds are around. Uh, a bunch of different things of lower elevations are, are found here in Norils in this particular tour. The area holds also the very rare and local blackish peewee. Um, it looks better than this photo. <laughs> this is a very bad photo I got in a rainy day through the scope. Chestnut cap puffbirds are a possibility in the area, and uh, eventually, if you're lucky, you can you can get great uh, potu. I have never really seen it there, but it should be. And I, I'm just taking advantage to show off my photo. Really, this is a really cool photo that I managed a couple years ago, but not in this area, but in a similar elevation area. So eventually, you can get it. Just gotta be lucky. Um, you can get Laffer's nest piculate and uh, this uh, coppery uh, this is Jacamar this is, uh, the uh, it's not bronzy that's in Brazil is the similar to bronzy but in Ecuador um, purplish Jacamar there you go uh, is the only place that we can see it on this tour this bird here yellow bellied tanagers are around and uh, eventually paradise tanagers you can see a few things there and this is the only place for the tour in which you can see another of the mega South American birds the Hoatzin or a stinky turkey so um, this is the Amazon for you we will start backtracking now and moving from the foothills of the Andes over here to the inter-Andean valleys around these areas and we'll be starting to cross through several several rivers and waterfalls and the area is very nice uh, if we need it we can cross through this uh, ferry here that I did once uh, it's a very cool ferry that it is powered by the river itself they just tilt the ferry one side of the other and that will make that the water pulls the ferry one side or the other is a very cool mechanism very very ingenious very interesting and uh, yeah we'll be crossing through some interesting things like the Tucan <laughs> statue there with a god on top we don't see it here and uh, because we go through several rivers we have a chance to see several things that occur in the rivers like a fasciated tiger heron or even a torrent duck this is a female that I tried to do a thing there with the water very slow shutter speed try to get the bird not to move and then have the water moving <laughs> I don't know if I succeeded well but then I tried the same thing with a the male there but this one was closer much nicer and also I did the same thing with this uh, white cap deeper so all these water related birds or river related birds you can see in this particular track while you go to the inter Indian valleys there all right so now back to the maps that day we start in here and we move up a little bit of a slope there and we move up the western the eastern cordillera of the Andes here and end up in the inter-Andean valleys right here 
So we do this movement here from here, zoop, up Zamora, Loja, and then we move up and bird a little bit for a couple days around the inter andean valleys in these areas here. So another map the same way, zoop, and we'll bird around Saraguro where we'll spend a couple nights in a nice uh, hotel run by indigenous community is very cool and uh, we will try to find us probably the main target for the area or one of the main targets for the area is this one the crescent faced ampita this one was a bit too close for me to take a decent picture but this is my previous picture so <laughs> i'm fine with that one and uh, this is the one that i really envy sam woods again that bastard <laughs> In any case, a crescent face Dan Pita, you can see why is one of the main targets of this area. It's just a superb, superb bird. Um, and the other big, big, big target of the area is the chestnut bellied Cotinga, quite rare and range restricted, difficult, difficult bird to find. This is a female that I managed to find last year and a male, I photographed both last year. It's a really cool bird. Sam Woods again. Uh, comes up with a red-faced parrot, which is another of the big targets in the in the region that we'll be visiting. And uh, then we have a few of the tanagers that we can see in these uh, Indirandian um, forest uh, slopes, forested slopes, like a buff-breasted mountain tanager or golden-crowned tanager. And um, this is also one of the main main areas to get this masked mountain tanager, also quite rare and difficult. Um, in the same region, we got uh, a Neblina metal tail, which is a hummingbird that is very, very range restricted as well. But, oh well, this is not it, eh? This is a rainbow bearded thornbill, which is in the same areas as well. A very, very cool bird. Have a chance to get black and chestnut eagles eventually, and a, a few more tanagers like scarlet bellied mountain tanagers, uh, black headed hemispingus, uh, several, several things. And now, we move towards another spot and um, you see we were birding it doesn't show well but we were birding this region here and now we're gonna move towards this region here that is this is the difference here so we were birding in, in areas like this and we're moving up in these higher higher areas where we can start getting some paramo and I wanted to show you how the paramo looks like all grassy and that but this A flower here is the key the bird that we need leaves of this flower um, this is the same flower and this Andean Titi spine tool is just photo bombing my flower photo this is <laughs> actually not a good picture of the flower this one here yes um, but the bird that lives in these flowers is this one here just brought to science discovered new for science two years ago blue-throated hill star the um, local people of these particular areas, they saw this bird and they saw that it was very different from what the field guide, the closest to the field guide, uh, the closest bird in the field guide looks like to this one. And they brought in an expert who obviously recognized it and they made some studies and found out that it is a new species, the black, uh, the blue throated heel star. So it is a very nice, nice, nice bird. And we go for that one in that particular area before moving farther in. So you see, from here in these areas, we start moving on and we cross another ecosystem you see here, and we go into some really, really, really dry areas until we're very close to the city of Cuenca. But notice how dry the environment turns in here. You can start getting like uh, white-tipped swifts and uh, bantail sierra finches and a bunch of things that are in dry, dry areas, including like Andean Tinamu. And we go there for another of the Ecuadorian endemics, the pale-headed brush finch, thought to be extinct for like 30 years and rediscovered again by whom? The Hokotoko Foundation people. So we put in special attention for that one, the pale-headed brush finch, another of the Ecuadorian endemics, together with the blue-throated heel stars, another Ecuadorian endemic. Um, I forgot to mention that. So um, yeah. Then the very last day of the tour, or the main tour, we go to the high Andes where there's no air. We go above 14,000 feet and um, we move that day. is very interesting. This, the whole tour is very interesting because we go 
That day we're in Cuenca and we go to close to 14,000 feet and we finish up in the coast. So the whole tour, as I was saying, is very interesting because we go from sea level all the way to 14,000 feet and more. So from shorts and really hot steamy areas to really cold areas in here. Okay? Um, we are doing this last bit of track between Cuenca and Guayaquil and in here the Cajas National Park is what we will be going after. You can see the Paramo here is a rocky and grass. This is a plane cap uh, ground tire that we can see there and this is how it looks like. You can see the how I'm a clown really <laughs> with these uh, gloves here but it is quite cold. Look at these people here, no gloves, they are from Alaska. <laughs> very nice guys, very nice guys. Um, and so this is one of the lakes that we invert, invert around and we look for several things that are in these regions. The ecosystem is quite unique. The um, flora, the, the vegetable um, biomass in here is just incredible. Um, very intricate. This is a puya uh, flower and uh, this is a cushion plant that is a macro shot of a cushion plant so oof, it's very very nice you can see white tailed deer eventually from there and a couple other things and as i told you it can be quite hot so we have to be really well prepared with a lot of clothes in the day and then in the afternoon we'll end up in Guayaquil and sea level so you strip off <laughs> your clothes and the area holds another of the ecuadorian endemics the violet-throated metal tail. This one here is a cool hummingbird that it is restricted basically to this particular uh, national park and in a couple more spots but this is where you actually do get it and this is the only place where you can get tit like Dacnis in Ecuador also quite rain restricted and only shared with Peru. Tit like Dacnis. And uh, we go to some uh, um, polylepis patches here as you can see my wife here walking this is several years back, maybe 15. <laughs> Look how young she is. And this is a polylepis uh, tree here, trees. And uh, we go into polylepis to try to find this guy here. Another of the big targets of uh, for most people. This is a giant conebill. Look why is it called conebill. Very cool bird, eh? It's um, not that easy to find, but this is the place to find it. A couple other things that can show up in there include... Uh, um, blue mantle thornbills and um, these uh, many striped canasteros are around here on the cushion plants you see this is what i was showing you a cushion plant uh, we have a red rump bush tyrant that can be seen in there the shining sunbeams are in the areas and uh, a bunch of other things but then we finish up in uh, the coast again yeah, so I was telling you, that day we start in Cuenca, that is right here, in the inter Valleys, and we move up, bird this way up high here, and finish up in the coast in Guayaquil, that particular day. But the next day, we move towards the coast, but towards the beach and the dry forest in these regions here, in Santa Elena and Ayampe. And we only take two more days here after another of the Ecuadorian endemics, which is the Esmeralda's wood star. It's a hummingbird that I have not seen, but my wife has, because she used to work for the Hokotoko Foundation and some of the field work that she used to do is go visit the uh, nesting grounds of these, um, of these uh, um, bird, this hummingbird. You can see her uh, here birding with her uh, colleagues from, from work in the Hokotoko Foundation Reserve, Ayampe. And this bad, bad picture is from her. <laughs> I should not say that. This is a, I haven't seen the bird, so I'm just envious. But this is a Esmeralda's Woodstar female. I have not seen it in a nest, of course. Uh, and this is a male. Okay, very tiny. They say that it is the second smallest hummingbird in the world, the Esmeralda's Woodstar. This picture is by Jose, my friend. And uh, this is the end. But... Hey guys, so if you enjoyed it, uh, thank you. Um, I'll invite you to watch my other videos. Remember I did the Pantanal, Southeast Brazil, um, Argentina, Belize, 
and the Galapagos Islands. Um, all my other friends, Charlie, uh, Ken, Sam, Daniel, Jose, Pablo, they have all done other tours. Please watch those as well. And if you like those, please go back to the uh, Tropical Burning website where you got the link and go into the links of PayPal to help support in the lives of the guys that in these hard times have to take you around virtually only. But um, uh, some income really helps in these times. Thanks.